Welcome to Spotlight. I'm Ryan Keating. Today we are fortunate to have with us one of the world's foremost photographers, a man who has photographed virtually every prominent dance company in the world, as well as countless celebrities and media personalities. His exhibitions have won worldwide acclaim, as have his two volumes of nude photography. Today we're delighted he's allowed us the chance to focus our lenses on him and share with us some insight to the beauty of his work. Please welcome Ken Duncan. Ken, welcome to Spotlight. Hi, Ryan. You had uh, started out as a roller skating uh, champion. Yes, uh, I always wanted to roller skate uh, when I was growing up. I mean, I always wanted to dance when I was growing up, and a roller skating rink opened across the street from where I was living, and at the time, boys didn't really study dancing, so the next thing I thought would be to roller skate. And uh, I met a girl, and we partnered, became a team, and I won the New Jersey Roller Skating Championships in freestyle, men's freestyle, fours, and pairs, and dance. And that's how I got into show business, I think. Did you spend a lot of your time roller skating? Uh, I did, and then I decided my teacher thought it would be better if I studied dancing also to help my form and figure for skating and to show a better line. So uh, I did that. And How did your peers react to your roller skating as opposed to your dancing? Dancing was too new in the beginning, so it, it, no one really seemed to know that I was dancing or studying dancing. You've said that you were very popular in high school due to your height. Well, I, I was small, <laughs> and uh, therefore it seemed like I, re always, I was always the mascot or whatever was happening. Uh, I did a lot of artwork, and uh, I was always making uh, posters and signs for the football games and so forth. I was kind of small to play football or basketball or anything like that, so my end was doing the posters and the advertising. Uh, at what point did you decide to come to New York and pursue a career as a dancer? When I started studying ballet, to help my skating, I, I got really into it, into the ballet and into the jazz. And well, this is what you would want it all along. Yes. So I came to New York and I started studying, and uh, then I was drafted in the army. So when I got out of the army, which is two years, I said I'd just come to New York and uh, study ballet and dancing and do what I wanted to do. You've said that the hardest thing in life is to uh, make decisions and accomplish your goals. Do you find that's true? Uh, coming to New York and pursuing a career as a dancer? Well, I, I think in my case that I, I wanted to be a dancer. And uh, I came to New York and uh, I had an accident while I was dancing after two and a half years and I, I broke my ankle and broke a blood vessel that went across the ankle bone, which laid me up for a year. And I had to hobble around. Every time I sat down, I had to raise my foot higher so that I could get the circulation going. Because up until that point, dance had been your uh your main goal my, in life. My Did you find that terribly traumatic? Well, when I found out I couldn't dance anymore, I, through another injury I also had, uh, I didn't know what to do. I was floundering around. I, uh, I had studied art in school. I had gone to college after a year of studying art. And I took a job in Klein's department store in the art department, which proved to be a fiasco. <laughs> and uh, I felt like I was in the army again. So I was there two weeks and I left. And then I had to find something I wanted to do. And I worked for this public relations firm even when I was dancing to maintain rent and salary and make money to live. And the photographer who photographed for them needed someone to help him out. So I saw him and I went to the studio and he hired me. Well, you had originally gotten interested in photography through a course at the Y. No, uh, originally uh, I worked for the photographer for four years and he used to do catalog work. So I learned how to style clothes, how to cut clothes, how to make skirts larger, make clothes smaller and uh, he didn't like photographing children so after I was there for a while he would set up the lights and said well just photograph these children and so that's how it all started with me I started photographing children and from children it worked into teenagers and one day and I was in the studio and I said here I am in the studio this is great this is what I should do I read the New York Times and the YWCA and Lexington Avenue had a, a school a class once a week for six weeks how to print and develop photographs. So I decided that would be a good course to take. And the, one of the assignments was to go and photograph boats somewhere. And the only boats that I knew were in Central Park. And I went to Central Park, all the boats had been taken out of the water because summer was over and it was fall. But I managed to find a few empty boats that had kind of fallen by the wayside and were rotting in the water, which I photographed. And on my way back from the uh, photographing, I went by the band shell in the park, and there were two dancers 
dancing on stage. So I went over and watched them for a while. And then I talked to them about photographing them, and they allowed me to photograph them. And they were really rehearsing there because they had no money to rent a studio, and they could use the band shell free. So that's how it all began. Do you find that because you uh, have had training as a dancer, and you're very aware of spatial patterns, that you um, are more into photographing dancers as opposed to regular people? Well, I think it's an advantage having studied dancing and roller skating both, because I can work with dancers and, and tell them to plie or to releve or to torgete, and I know what the right point of the movement is. Uh, when I'm photographing models, I'll say, bend your knees, or go on your toes. And, uh, I think it helps. And, and from skating, I can photograph. I work with John Curry, the Olympic ice skating champion, and Robin Cousins, who's now the champion. And I can say do an axle or a sow cow or a waltz jump or whatever. And I can talk in their terms, which gives them the confidence that I know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. and I know what I'm doing. So it relaxes them also. At what point did your photography mainly focus on dance? Uh, well, actually, it was a magazine. Uh, two magazines, Dance and Ballroom. And Ballroom was just coming to an end and they were changing, uh, the publisher were changing the name to After Dark Magazine. And that was, I think, like the end of 1968. And uh, I started working with After Dark Magazine, working on some shows and things. And then I started doing some dance things and it sort of fell in together. This is a photograph of Anthony Dowell. And this was also uh, bought by the uh, Modern Museum in Amsterdam for their permanent collection. Uh, this is done in the studio, which gives me more of an opportunity to set up lighting and to create something. When you're photographing on stage, it's what's there, and then you have to go by what lighting is there. Uh, who's coming up? Uh, Suzanne Farrell from New York City Ballet. Uh, she was great to work with tall and slim life and uh, just a magnificent dancer. So that's Peter Martins. Peter Martins with the New York City Ballet also. And at the time when he came to the studio, he had an injury, so he really couldn't do what he would like done. So we had to give him very easy poses. In fact, if you can see it all, he's just kneeling down here because he, he had injured his ankle and his back was giving him trouble. So a lot of times you have to go along with what the dancer's body is doing mm -hmm. also. When dancers uh, come to your studio to be photographed and it's, it's an environment that they're not used to being photographed in, how do they react? Well, it's difficult because, uh, first of all, a dancer likes to work with an audience and on a stage. Uh, here they're in a small room and the no CD paper is nine foot wide and it, uh, it doesn't give them too much room to move in. Also, the ceilings are, my ceilings are about 10 and a half feet, so it gives them much room to jump in. Also, the feeling of performing is difficult because they're not performing, so they have to really give out and animate. This is a photograph here. It was Anthony Dell and Antoinette Sibley from the Royal Ballet, and that was done in a rehearsal hall in London. And this is a photograph coming up of Makarova? Uh, yes. Uh, of course, she just made her biggest uh, splash winning the Tony Award for On Your Toes. And she's a marvelous person to work with as a dancer, as a person, as a performer. Uh, she always gives her all, and it's, uh, it's a great pleasure working with her. Well, she has a very commanding presence, as does this gentleman here. I photographed Misha when he first arrived in the United States with Ballet, uh, joined Ballet Theater. And uh, it was, uh, he didn't understand English at the time, and it was very easy to work with him. With the production of hair, you got into nude photography. Right. Uh, when hair first began, they had the nudity on stage, which... Well, this was the first time anybody had actually bared yes. all on the stage. Yeah. One thing I'm interested in is the audience reaction at that time, as opposed to now, it seems sort of passe. Well, I don't know about the audience reaction. Mine was quite surprising. I didn't believe it would happen. But suddenly here I am photographing this and trying to create something that's printable in the newspapers and still be nude. And uh, in my first session, it was very difficult. I had three people. And uh, I think it was Paul Jabara and Hiram Keller, my girl named Nancy. I don't remember her last name. And uh, I was so nervous about doing it. I, 
I didn't want them to take off their clothes because I didn't know what I'd, I'd do. How did you overcome that uptightness? Suddenly I just said, take off your clothes. <laughs> and, and they did, and uh, I started putting the bodies together, and I had to do it so we could conceal the genitals so that uh, it would be printable. And by putting these arms around the girls and starting moving legs and bodies together, it became very interesting. Did you find that very challenging? I got into it right away, yeah. Um, the, the girl was so porcelain-like, and the, the man was so rugged, the hairy arms and things, and the combination of bodies together started to really move me, like uh, seeing statues come to life. Here's a photograph we have here. Oh, uh, this is one of the photographs. And, uh, as you can see, um, it's a nude, but it's really not a nude. You don't see anything, really. Do you prefer to photograph nudes in color or in black and white? I, well, I like doing it in black and white because I think you see the, the line and the form of the movement better. Uh, when you photograph color, it gives you a different aspect of looking at it, and then color is taking over some of the photograph where, as in uh, uh, black and white, you see the lights and shadows better, I think. Uh, when your subjects came in to be photographed nude, were they uptight as opposed to your... I never quite knew how to handle it because after hair, so many shows opened off Broadway and, and I kept getting called to photograph them. I never knew how to quite handle it. I would be timid at times and, and have them take off parts of clothing until they were nude. And that seemed to be very painful. So I found the best way is to say, everyone take off your clothes and start directing immediately. Now the hardest thing is when you're photographing a show, the people you're photographing haven't even started rehearsal yet. I don't know what the show's about and you've got to create something that's visibly attractive. You've published two volumes of new pho uh, photography. How were they uh, received? Uh, they were received very well. They're published by Danette Publications, which publishes Dance Magazine and After Dark. And uh, I think they went into three or four printings of the books. So it's well received, and people still keep calling and wanting copies, but it's been out of print for quite a while now. Do you have any plans for publishing further? Yes, I'm volumes? working on a new one now of just dancers, male and female, and groups together, showing how the body works, and how the muscles work, what the muscle tone is like, the difference between male and female, and when they're in lists and so forth. This is a very interesting shot we have here. Now that's a Dutch dancer, and uh, you can see how he's high in the air, and his form is beautiful. And this was line. done in your studio? Yes, it was done in the studio. Uh, more recently, one of the things that you've been noted for is your Red Shoes exhibit. Right. And how did this all evolve? Well, the Red Shoe exhibit evolved from a restaurant that opened on uh, 5th Avenue and 13th Street called Ozma. Upstairs was a discotheque called the Emerald City. And the idea was to have some kind of decor in the restaurant. And the owners called me, and we decided uh, to do the ruby red shoes, which would take you to the land of Oz. And the restaurant opened and closed within, I think, three or four months. And uh, so the pictures stayed in my studio. And then uh, Lincoln Center Gallery that opened beneath the Met, the curator came over and talked to me about doing an exhibition. And they liked the red shoe photographs so much, so I expanded from Well, this was photos. Judy Garland's original red shoes that you had photographed? Yes, I got, uh, we were able to get Judy Garland's original red shoes from Christie's auction house before they auctioned them. And we had to put it like a $10,000 bond to have them for an hour. And uh, I was holding her shoes in my hand. It was just really magical. But the shoes over the years had changed color, and they weren't ruby red anymore, and they were kind of magenta color. So I had to put a, a gel on and make them red. This is a picture of Alexis Smith with the Red Shoes, working on this book now called The Red Shoes. And this uh, series is when celebrities enact their uh, private fantasies? Yes. Uh, in other words, they have to be in white clothing. And the only color in the photograph are the red shoes, other than their flesh color or their hair. What was Alexis's uh, fantasy? Well, Alexis just wanted to be in a very pretty dress. And uh, <laughs> Tony Chase, who's a very good friend of mine, does a lot of designing for the act. Uh, actresses uh, has done the clothes for a lot of the photographs and this is one of the Lexus he designed for her. Here's Dom DeLuise coming up. Couldn't find anything that I thought would fit him so I decided I'd get the white nosing paper and make it like a barrel and I had white suspenders and he came in with a white cap on. I had white gloves so I made him look like a tramp mm -hmm. and uh, like a hobo and uh, 
First of all, the bar was very long. It was down to his ankles, and I made it shorter. And shorter. He said, my best feature are my knees. <laughs> so I want to show my knees. So then I made it uh, so you could see his knees, and then he was happy. That's it. <laughs> you know. This is a photograph of Robin Cousins now, who is now the Olympic ice skating champion. And we made him as a clown, jumping. This is Cynthia Gregory? This is Cynthia Gregory here, yes. She's the, one of the ballerinas in American Ballet Theater. Fantastic dancer and performer, marvelous person. Actually, we, the dress wasn't finished that we had. <laughs> uh, we didn't have what was ready for her, so to change a little bit, I had a, a, a mask in the closet, and I took a pen and, and put a cigarette on the end of it so it looked like a long cigarette holder, and we just made it look good. This is Star Denias and Gregory King. They were dancing in a uh, touring in a ballet called the Pablo a Celebration. Uh, Star is now uh, was the understudy to Makarova in On Your Toes, and uh, she uh, she uh, did the matinee performances. I photographed Marcel when he was here doing his one-man show, and uh, he was very easy to work with because he. Uh, he, had, he knows movement, and I would direct him, and uh, he said to his agent afterwards, he says, oh, he knows what he's doing, he's, he's an artist, he says, I want to come back and work with him again, so I look forward to that opportunity when he comes back to New York. You're putting together a book of the Red Shoes. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I don't know how many it will be yet, but I, I'm uh, going to photograph Mark Hamill coming up soon, and Farrah Fawcett. Uh, I photographed about... Uh, 60 celebrities so far. This is an interesting shot. Uh, this is Gunther Gable Williams from Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. Now, did you get the elephant into your studio? No, it wouldn't quite get into the elevator. Uh, so this is the one photograph I had to do outside the studio, which was at the Nassau Coliseum. And uh, I had to bring the white no-scene paper up there, and we had to get the elephant on. And as soon as the elephant got on, it just uh, did a big dumping. We had to scoop it up, you know, and then Gunther said he'd make it kneel down. So when the elephant knelt down, it ripped all the paper. So then we covered up with more white paper, and then the elephant started to urinate. So it was a problem, but we finally got the photograph. So from that experience, you would say elephants are generally a temperamental lot? I'd say so, <laughs> yes. Here comes a, a photograph of Cheetah Rivera. Okay, Cheetah... Uh, I've known for a long time, and we're very good friends. And Cheetah said, I want to do something different. I don't want to look like I'm dark and Latin. She said, I want to be something like Jean Harlow. So this is what we try to create with Cheetah. So she prefers to be white trash? Well, at least in this picture. <laughs> <laughs> and she had a good time doing it. Well, she's a wonderful talent. Yeah, she is. There are very few people who can exude such energy. And she has fun doing what she does, which is exciting she puts herself into it. Coming up is a shot of uh, Liv Ullman and another animal. Yes, it seems like animal time. Uh, Liv was, is a marvelous person who I worked with once before, and uh, I wanted to make her like an Urte painting, and uh, so I, I rented the Irish Wolfhound for the photograph, and Tony Chase made the dress, and uh, we did this photo. You have a couple of exhibits coming up in the next month or so. Yes, um, Sea Cliff Gallery out in Long Island. Uh, I just had one closed now in Saratoga, New York, and the ballet company was there. And I have something coming up in uh, Soho, and a, a nude exhibition, I think, in the fall. Are there any other books you're working on? Yes, I have a book called Broadway Buns that I'm working on. A view of the theater from behind. I photographed about uh, 25 shows. Uh, many of the chorus people, many of the lighting people, directors, producers. It's a whole look at the theater from behind. Well, it sounds delightful, and we wish you the best of luck with it, and we thank you for stopping by, Ken. This is Ryan Keating, and you've been watching Spotlight with guest photographer Ken Duncan. If you have any comments or suggestions, you can write to myself in care of Pero Productions, 640 10th Avenue, New York, New York, 10036. Until next week, this is Ryan Keating for Spotlight.